Hello, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and today I'm reigniting the beauty strategy series, which is a series here on my channel where we talk about how I channel some coping mechanisms through beauty that deal with stress, anxiety, health issues, mental health issues, just helping me get through my day and how I channel my passion for beauty through these things. I have mentioned a few times on my channel the types of health issues that I have struggled with. We're going to get into those as well as some of the products and techniques that I use to get through some of those harder days, specifically in the pain management area. So I hope that this video is helpful and let's go ahead and jump right in. First, I want to say thank you. I'm so happy. One, that I've gotten some responses on those Google Forms. So linked down below are two Google Forms. One is a video request that is free form for anything that you would like me to cover here on my channel. The second is kind of a multiple choice question of the videos that I have prepped waiting in the wings so that I know what to prioritize in filming to help you the most. There have been very sweet comments and responses through those links that we're asking specifically for this video. And that means a lot to me because I have searched for this video. I have watched the videos that exist out there on this and to be able to contribute to that, to let someone know that they're not alone, to maybe offer some advice that helps someone dealing with these issues means the absolute world to me. It's what I set out here on YouTube to do was one, to create community, but also to be as helpful as I possibly could. So thank you if you reached out about this video. Thank you if you have reached out about anything. I'm so happy to create this community. And on one hand, it's nice to know that I'm not alone in some of these issues. I wish that neither one of us had to deal with them, but this is life. So it's nice to find people who can relate and understand. And I want to start this off by giving an overview of my health struggles. If you're just here for the products and tips, which is totally fine, I'll put a timestamp up on the screen of where you can skip to as well as time stamps down below in the description box. So let's go ahead and talk through kind of what I deal with so that it gives you context on why I'm <laughs> giving you tips and tricks on the things that I'm giving you tips and tricks on. Words, you know? All right, so my health journey. Without going too in depth, and also a quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, but I'm also not someone seeking diagnosis on the internet. I have been working with a team of doctors practically my entire life, and I'm continuing to do that even as I've been having some flare-ups lately, so I'm not looking for a diagnosis, but feel free to share tips down below. This is an open forum. Be nice. Let's share some tips within each other, but no diagnoses, please. This is not a medical channel. Also. I have had chronic health issues my entire life. Some of them have been very bizarre. Maybe we can do story times at some point, but what I'm dealing with in my current day has been going on since the start of 2013. I developed very severe environmental allergies. I have a video on beauty products that I recommend if you struggle with allergies um, in the playlist beauty strategy, so check that out. But very severe. I did allergy shots, went into anaphylactic shock. It's like no joke, allergic to the outside world. So that's one thing I struggle with and everything that comes with that. Itchy, dry, crusty eyes, not being able to breathe all the time, mucus everywhere, that type of thing. Again, check that video out if you're interested in that specific topic. But I also have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome and a slow thyroid, which that was diagnosed, what is this year? it's 2022 that was diagnosed in 2018 so since then I've worked with a again team of doctors it, they're not all a team together I'm not fancy enough for that but I've worked with different doctors um, endocrinologists my PCP dietitians functional medicine practitioners all the woo-woo things that you can imagine on top of that and there for a while we were managing that through lifestyle changes and some of the things that I'll share with you today that doesn't mean that it's completely gone. The thyroid problems and the hormone problems that I deal with are not curable. They're just manageable. So it's important for me to maintain some of the things we're going to talk about today in order to stay on top of that and to function like a human. 
So I get it. If you have hormone problems, man, they're the worst. Not the worst of all things, no matter what you're dealing with. We'll get into that next, but it's rough out here, you know? So that being said, that's kind of what I'm dealing with. Let's go into the first kind of overarching advice that I would give somebody who is struggling with chronic pain or hormonal issues or just some type of chronic illness. So I'm looking at my notes and I wrote first things first. (laughs) I want you to know that you are not alone. These types of issues can feel very isolating and especially when they're kind of one of those invisible illnesses where a lot of the feelings, the pain is not visible on the surface. A lot of people are not going to understand it and no one is going to just assume that you're going through that. It's hard because you would expect people to kind of catch on to the signs, but they don't always do that. So I'm going to link down below a wonderful, wonderful article. If you have someone in your life who just, even after you've tried to talk to them about it, doesn't quite get your perspective, kind of gets, you know, maybe annoyed on the days that you can't be fully productive or up and running around. I made my husband read this article because it articulated everything that I felt going through something like this. And it's, it's very helpful. So I'm going to leave that link below if you need to share that with someone in your life. I think it's very helpful, um, very articulate. I just love that so much. But that being said, you need to let yourself feel grief for having these health issues, grief for not being able to do the things that you always want to do, grief for maybe not being in the same shape or being able to do the same things that you once did before. I had to give up one of my favorite things, which is hiking and being outside because of this and that I'm getting emotional and that kind of shifted dynamics in my life because the things that I used to do to hang out with people, I had to be very mindful of that. So let yourself feel the grief, but then also know that even though your day to day may look different from somebody else's or from where you were before all of this started that doesn't make you less of a person it doesn't make you less worthy of love and there are tips and tricks you can get through some of that with but you still need to acknowledge at the end of the day that it's just not going to look the same anymore and that's okay so let yourself feel the grief but don't stay there too long if that makes sense so yeah that's what I would tell you also the topics that we're going to touch on I am not going to be telling you to rub essential oils all over your body I am not (laughs) going to tell you a magic potion that's going to fix your life and I'm not going to be endorsing CBD for a multitude of reasons Um, quality is one of them whether you have access to CBD that has THC or not is another issue just I have not had personal success stories with just CBD so we're not talking about magic potions or salves or anything like that these are going to be practical things that you can do for pain management if those things work for you. I'm envious. They just didn't work for me. And I don't want to sell you a false promise. The things we are going to cover are hydration, sleep, stress management, learning your triggers and your onset symptoms, finding an unwinding practice and letting go of the belief that every day needs to be optimized or productive, having clothes and beauty things that work with you and not against you on the days that you're not feeling up to getting ready and then prioritizing the things that you need. All of those things that I just listed above, exercise, water, sleep, de-stressing, really prioritizing those. And then, yeah, that's what we're going to get into. So I want to touch on a couple of those before we move into specifics. Finding an unwinding practice. Mine is a rich lady shower. I have a video on that. Finding something like that that can really help you wind down from stress is going to be massively important because stress can do crazy things to the body, especially if you're already dealing with more hormonal things or pain. You can really hold tension in those muscles and you can also, you know, trigger some hormonal imbalance with cortisol. So having that is massively important. Finding and learning your triggers and your onset symptoms. For me, a lot of my triggers with my pain in specific is hydration, sleep, and stress. 
knowing that I know that I need to extra prioritize managing those things. And then also knowing my onset symptoms, I know when I start to feel the first sign of pain that I need to take action instead of waiting until it develops to a full blown migraine. The other thing is, you know, with my migraine, I, I do get an aura sometimes. I, My husband, for example, with his migraines, he gets kind of um, optical symptoms. Learning all of those so that you can act as soon as possible is massively important in this. So make sure that you're doing that. That said, let's move in to the first one that I mentioned, which is hydration. So find a water bottle that you love to drink from and make sure you're getting enough water. I'm not going to tell you the ounces that you should have. It varies based on a lot of different factors, but make sure you're staying hydrated. If you get into an SOS area, I do like to supplement with electrolytes. There are a lot of products on the market. I am trying one from Chroma Wellness, which maybe we'll do a video on that because I have a lot of thoughts. However, the ones that I and my husband both have been using since 2014 are the Noon Hydration Tablets. I like these because you have 10 servings in this little tube that you can throw into your bag. We really like these when we're hiking too. They do have some with like vitamin C, some with caffeine, but for the most part, I just like the traditional ones. I have not met a flavor that I do not like. You just pop one of these into like 16 ounces of water or however watered down you want it to be. And it fizzes kind of like Alka-Seltzer, but there are electrolytes in this and it is lower in sugar, which is important to me. Yeah, two grams of added sugar, which is not bad at all. Better than like a Gatorade or a Propel. There's no crazy weird ingredients in this. There's natural flavor, but like, eh. And it also has stevia. So if you're not a stevia fan, you might not like this, but I don't get a strong stevia taste, although I am someone who doesn't mind stevia. But the portability of these is great. The fact that you can have multiple servings in one container that you can throw in your bag and it's protected with the plastic. I love these. They do help me. So something like this for hydration, it's good to have. I should mention my migraines get triggered by hormones, but also dehydration. So, and from my muscle pains, I forgot to mention that I have a pinched nerve in my neck and that's where the pain management comes from as well as the migraines. I might have to input that in the beginning. All right, sleep. That could be a whole video in itself. So I'm not gonna go into that, but prioritize your sleep, make sure you're getting enough sleep. Same with stress management, that's a whole video on its own. So we're gonna keep moving along here. I wanna talk about chronic pain. So that's a good place to say that. My chronic pain is migraines, terrible migraines. Hormonal for me, but also from the pinched nerve in my neck and bad posture from, I have an S curve in my neck and my upper back. It's not enough to have been treated for scoliosis. scoliosis as a kid or an adult. It's just enough to give me excruciating pain from time to time, especially as a desk sitter. But when I talk about finding your triggers, I know that sitting in one position all day and not moving is a trigger for that pinched nerve. And I know that my hormones are a trigger for my migraines that can then kind of activate that pinched nerve. So I try to manage those. And it's important to find the next answer out, which is does your pain respond to cold or hot or a mixture of both. Mine typically responds better to cold. So I have three products that I really like to use, which I will show a couple on screen here because I didn't grab them. The first is an ice roller. This is super nice for the temples and the forehead. If you have a migraine or the neck, it's nice to just sit there and kind of do a light massage with that. So I really do recommend those. You can get those fairly cheap on Amazon. They're definitely under $20. You can probably find them for under 10. I do like those, but what I use mostly are these next ice packs. So I got this ice pack from the first chiropractor I ever saw. And I these are the best ice packs, these specific ones. It's the Comfort Gel Pack, and I don't know the name of the brand, but they're reusable. They're this nice gel. They really hold a freeze super, super well. You can also microwave and use these as heat therapy. There's instructions on the ice pack, so you never have to question how to use these items. They come in a variety of sizes. This is kind of the standard one, perfect for the back of the neck or the shoulder, but I have an extra large one that's probably three of these put together that covers my whole back. And I also have one that's probably three times the length of this and thin that can wrap around my whole neck. I love these. So for heat or ice therapy, 
I would highly recommend these. They're also affordable. They last forever. I have some that I have had since 2013, <laughs> and they're still going strong. They don't leak, and it says not to lay on them, but I lay my neck and head and back on them, and I haven't had a problem with leaking, but just be mindful of that. I can't say enough good things about these. They're pretty affordable, I believe. They're on Amazon, and you can get a multi-pack of different sizes or a multi-pack of the same size or just one. So definitely check these out if you know that you respond well to ice or heat therapy. The next thing in the ice department are the BioFreeze Cool the Pain Extra Large Patches. I love these. These are an SOS emergency situation for me. I will give the example of having a terrible migraine and we were supposed to go to a football game and I obviously am not gonna take an ice pack and hold it to my body while I'm at a football game, but I can adhere this patch and wear it for the entirety of the football game. Especially if I'm sitting at my desk, I get the extra large patches because they come with two different sizes. They come with an extra large patch and a long patch, and these cover my neck and back and the areas that I need them, my shoulders. These are incredible. They're also a lot less messy than the roll-on. I hate the smell of BioFreeze, but unfortunately it's like one of the most effective things for me for muscle pain and migraines, especially if I need to, like mentioned before, be on the go. You can get these on Amazon, excuse me. My face is so itchy today. Fall hay fever is upon us. I get these on Amazon. You can find them at CVS, Walmart, Target, anywhere that sells kind of drugstore type products. I believe it's like eight or nine dollars for a box. You get two different sizes and two of each in the extra large patch box. They have different sizes. Again, the availability on these is great. I always keep a box around for in case of emergency situations, but for the most part, I'm using those ice packs and I cannot recommend those ice packs enough. Then for heat. I have a heating pad from Amazon. I'll link the specific one down below. It has three settings, high, medium, low. I use this more for cramps because PCOS is just not, not the tea. But if you're someone who needs heat for pain management, it's nice. The only thing is I wish it would get a little hotter. It is quite large, so it does cover the majority of my back. I think they have even larger ones, but this one isn't bad. I haven't had any issues with this, you know, not working. The only thing is, is I wish it would get hotter, but I enjoy having heat that's probably stronger than I need to on my skin and my body, which is what I'll cover in the next thing. As far as heat goes, I just take a really long, super hot shower to the point where my skin is red. I don't know if I should be recommending that, but that's what works for me, especially letting that hit the back of my neck and my shoulders and letting it kind of release those muscles. And I'll do some stretches in there, which is gonna get me into the next topic, which is massage, stretch, and pressure. If, especially if you're having muscle pain, the nerve pain that I experience kind of sends signals to my muscles to like tighten up and become stiff and hurt. So that's where I'm coming from with this. So first of all, the stretches. Highly recommend doing some sort of regular stretching practice, whether it's yoga or just stretching. If you're into just stretching, I would recommend Bob and Brad on YouTube, especially for some of the stretches that have really been a game changer for me. One of them is putting your elbows on the edge of a bed and stretching out your upper back. I'll insert a picture here or I'll link the video that they cover that down below, whichever. And then some of the stretches that I went over in PT are very in line with what Bob and Brad recommend. So check them out. It's a great resource. They are both physical therapists. The second is Yoga by Adrian, a free yoga resource. If you don't want to spend money and you want to test it out, she has specific videos for certain types of pain. If you sit at a desk all day, all of that good stuff. So I recommend both of those channels on YouTube down below. It's so nice to have free resources like that. So check those out. But from a stretching perspective, there's a couple of things that I would recommend to have in your arsenal to help you with stretching. The first is the dreaded foam roller. These you have to get comfortable with pain, but if you're someone who has chronic pain, you are probably the type of person that when you get a massage, you want them to really dig in and do deep tissue. So this is gonna feel that good pain that comes with that. This is a super cheap one from Five Below that was $5. You don't need to do something super fancy, but this one is really nice. There's one stretch that I like for the knots that I get in my neck and my back, and it is putting this under the middle of my back putting my arms behind my head to support my head and then rolling up and down to really release those knots, but also 
to release the tension that's in my spine from the muscles pulling on it. So I really recommend one of these. I have a fancier one from Pevolve that I wanted to show. This is nice, but honestly, I end up using that five below one most of the time because it's big and wide, but you can get some like this that have texture on it to kind of help relieve those pain points. You can see that this is kind of designed probably for a spine in mind but some type of foam roller. It doesn't have to be super pricey, any of those. And looking up videos on foam rolling, I believe Bob and Brad, they have some on their YouTube channel, but those are super helpful for me, especially if I'm in a pinch and I just need to realign my back and my neck or to work out some knots. The last two kind of stretching aids are gonna be yoga blocks. This one is new, I haven't opened it, but I have two open ones down in the basement. These are just gonna help you in certain stretches that you might need a little extra support in. These can be super cheap. You can find them at Target. You can find them at Walmart in the exercise section, Amazon. They're just really helpful in supporting some of the stretches that your body might not be ready to do on its own. And then a yoga wheel. This one is from Pete's Choice, apparently. You can get these on Amazon, again, anywhere that sells yoga equipment. These are really nice to stretch out the back or to open up the chest that might be pooling on your back and neck if you have pain there. They'll also help support you in yoga poses. You can get these for fairly inexpensive. Again, you don't need the best of the best, especially if you're just testing this out, but this is an excellent tool to help maintain mobility. So that said, all of this stretching and yoga, it's to maintain mobility. So what I learned in physical therapy is with pain from nerves and pain in the muscles, the best thing you can do is to keep blood circulating, to keep mobile and have movement. And that is where all of this is coming from. Those really help me maintain movement, especially if I just need to get up from my desk, stretch out a little bit, or I've worked all day, I need to stretch out a little bit, or I'm feeling the onset of pain, I'll stretch out a little bit and it helps immensely for me. So look into some of those resources down below. I'll keep every product that I mention linked down below as well. None of them will be affiliated. I am small potatoes here on the internet, so don't you don't gotta worry about that, girl. All right, next is massage. So I used to get massages, not regularly, but when I needed them, but it got to a point where I would have a sudden onset of pain and the massage therapist that I liked the best was booked. And then I went to a couple massage therapists that were new to me and they were a total waste of money. So I took matters into my own hand and I have a couple products that help with that. The foam roller is one of them. The second that I don't have with me are just tennis balls laying on top of tennis balls on your pressure points top notch keep those around there's a lot of videos here on youtube too that show you how to use yoga and tennis balls in conjunction with each other to release some of those pressure points and knots and help kind of melt your muscles into a state of relaxation so i highly recommend having some tennis balls on hand they have specific pressure point balls but tennis balls to me are kind of like the right amount of give some of those pressure point balls are so hard that i can't take it and i love a really intense massage so if I don't like it I'm trying to figure out who you know the second thing is the shepherd's hook I have not used this personally but my friend who also suffers with back pain swears by it it makes it easy for you to hold a pressure point on your back yourself and I am looking into getting one of those it's on my Christmas wish list this year then the next two are slightly more expensive, but I just want to endorse them as things that really do work. The first is the YouTube famous Amazon massager that has handles so that you can hold it into place. I also will just put this behind me and lay against it. This thing actually works. I know that we've all had massagers either as gifts or that we've given as gifts or that we've just bought for ourselves that are like, they don't do the work that a deep tissue massage can do. This will give you a deep tissue massage. I have since bought one for my parents and they love it. I wanna say it was around $60, but the best $60 I ever spent. God bless my husband. He tries to give a massage, but he's not a masseuse, you know? So sometimes it's nice to have this that can really work in those muscles and I can control the pressure. It has um, a heat option and I can also control the pressure easily by slipping my arms through these handles and really pressing down or laying on it. It has a couple of different options. You can switch directions. It's just a really lovely one. I'll link to the exact one below. Then last in the massage category, and this one is very expensive and I do not take that lightly. However, I know sometimes when you are in as much pain 
as I was this particular day. I might insert a picture I sent to my friend who also deals with uh, back pain. I was in so much pain that I strapped ice pack to my forehead, slipped one in my hoodie underneath my, yeah, underneath my hoodie against my neck, huge sunglasses because the pain had turned into a migraine. So I was dealing with two types of pain and I did a pickup order at Target for this. And it is the Theragun and this is the Therabody. I got the kit that comes with a bunch of different attachments. It's not the highest end kit, but it's also not the mini or the lowest grade kit. Legit. This thing is legit. I paid $300 and I almost threw up at the price after I picked it up, but I was like, I can't take this anymore. I need something. The only thing is don't use this on your head or neck. The Therabody, they have since come out with a face one that I have on my birthday wish list. I'm praying I get because I suffer with a little bit of TMJ from the muscles. They kind of travel up my neck. I'm a mess, basically is what I'm saying. But I can highly endorse these. I've even seen them use these in chiropractor offices and physical therapy. Look into this if you are interested. Put it on your Christmas wish list. Put it on your Black Friday wish list. See if you can get it on sale. It's so great. And all the different attachments I would recommend. This one is my favorite. They have a pointier one for pressure points. But it also comes with an app on your phone that will give you guided ways to use this and how long to hold it on a certain part. A whole routine to kind of go through to really loosen up. It's said to be good for loosening up prior to sitting in a chair all day or doing activity and then also to unwind after doing an activity or sitting in a chair all day. So I do highly endorse this. I love this. I will let my husband go to town on my back with this thing. I can do my kind of traps by myself, legs, what have you. It's also great for recovery from exercise. I love this thing. Okay, let's talk about supporting the body when you're in pain. I'm going to pop a picture up of this neck stretcher. Please be aware of this. I threw my neck out doing it once. You have to work your way up. There's like <laughs> a smaller inclined side and a larger inclined side. Side. It's great if you're going to use it consistent enough to maintain that flexibility and mobility. But for me, I prefer foam rolling. I just want to throw a disclaimer in there. If you're going to purchase that, you need to be very, very careful and you need to build up the curve in your neck to the point where you can use that. Don't just jump in. Then I'll pop a picture up of this. I use a wedge pillow when I'm sitting in bed so that I'm a little bit more supported. It also can be transformed to support your legs in a certain way. It's also really nice if you're someone who has tendency to get pain from posture and you're sick and you need to be elevated in bed and just stacking pillows is gonna make your neck and your head worse. This is really nice to have to give you a little lift in bed. A little pricey, but I've had mine now for two years. It got a ton of use in quarantine when we were in an apartment and I was working in my bed a little bit more than I should have. It's just really nice to have, so I'll leave a link to that below. And then the last thing is a foot rest. So I actually wasn't gonna include this at first, but I did spend a little extra money to get a standing desk and it's ergonomic to my measurements. Same with my chair but I still have a tendency to do what I'm doing right now actually, which is to sit on one leg and then my posture goes to crap. So I picked this up at Ikea and while I'm working at my desk, this has helped immensely. And one of my good friends actually picked one up for herself and it has changed her posture as well. It's amazing how this foot rest can change the rest of your posture. It's so good. Um, and it's only $13 and it's from Ikea. And she looks like this. It's not the most beautiful thing, but what I love about it is when you're laying it like this, you have multiple heights to play with uh, wherever your feet need to be kind of boosted to. But then the other thing is you can flip it on this side and it kind of rocks so you can keep your feet busy while you're sitting at a desk. But I do really love this. I might actually recover mine in a pretty fabric, but it also has like dotted grippies I just really like this and I wanted to throw it in there in case any of you are struggling with working from a desk. All right, then the last thing I want to cover is touchy and I hope that this is okay with everyone. And I wanna give a disclaimer again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you to take any medicine, I'm just offering some helpful tips. So one of the things we didn't cover that you need to prioritize is medication. So I am on some medication for my allergies, as well as my mental health, which in turn helps with my stress and my chronic pain. 
I need to make sure I'm taking this every day. And I'm going to go through three different pill case options because I think organizing those and having them in a system that will alert you if you have not taken it or remind you if you've taken it or not is of most importance. So my favorite one is from Port and Polish. It's just really aesthetically pleasing as far as pill containers go. You have the days of the week marked. It's plenty large enough for larger pills or for multiple pills. I really love this. I love how it looks on my nightstand. They also offer a bunch of different colors, so I actually have a white one and a black one, so if I ever graduate to the point where I can't fit all of my pills for the day in one, I'll do an AM dose and a PM dose, which brings me into two other options that have really helped me stay on track. Port and Polish, you can get this at Nordstrom through their website and I think a couple other websites, but I'll link down below. Their customer service is also excellent. But the next two are from Amazon and you'll see that these are filled. So when I was doing work with a dietitian and a functional medicine practitioner, I was on a lot of different supplements, which is a perfect place to say, do not start taking a bunch of supplements if you are not checking in with some type of medical professional. It's just not a good idea. So if you are going to take supplements, if you're going to take someone's advice on supplements, someone's suggestion on supplements, make sure that a doctor or a medical professional in your life knows. Just, it's just the best. We're not going to go into details. But I love these because you get one for every day of the week and then an extra one. And it comes with this organizer to put hold everything in. But I love these because they have an AM and a PM and they're very large. So at one point I think I was taking 20 supplements. You know, they all fit. So I really like this. If someone in your life needs to get organized, this is a really nice one. Then the other one I didn't use for myself, but I got one for my grandmother and accidentally ordered a second one. <laughs> so I went and helped organize her medications. She's a five time cancer survivor, which is incredible, but she's on a lot of medicine because of that. And this is perfect. So as you can see, it comes in a case that clips close, but then each day of the week has four compartments. So it has morning, mid-morning, evening, and nighttime. And that was perfect for her. And they're deep enough that you can put multiple pills in there. And if you're traveling, they all fit in one case. You can, you know, close it you're good to go. So I really like this one as well. Again, I will link the exact ones down below. Then the last thing is, and this is for people who will find this information helpful. This is not a blanket suggestion. So one of the only medicines that help with my pain, and I've been on a few migraine medications since we linked it to hormones, as long as I keep my hormones in check, the migraines stay at bay. But now with this pinch nerve, we might have to revisit that. I digress. The only thing that helps with my migraines and my nerve muscle pain is Excedrin. The problem with that is the amount of caffeine and Excedrin I am very sensitive to. And when I was doing lifestyle changes for my health, I had given up caffeine. And when it came time to need an Excedrin, I would be up until 6 a.m. I'm just very sensitive to caffeine. So I had to stop taking it at certain times and then I was not taking it when I really needed it and the pain was getting out of control fast. So I didn't know this and this is why I'm sharing it. So if you're someone who, you know, Excedrin works for, but you are sensitive to caffeine, there are some options for you. I wish I would have known about these. Again, I'm not recommending you take these. Talk to your doctor. They can cause stomach issues. Just do what is best for you. Make sure your doctor is clued in. But I didn't know they made these. So there is a nighttime Excedrin that has, um, I think it's an antihistamine or like a drowsy ingredient in it. Off the top of my head, I don't know. But they do have that if you need help going to sleep with pain. That's excellent. But the one that I was so excited to find out about is from Bayer. And it is their wonder. What is this? This just says genuine aspirin Bayer, the wonder drug, safe pain relief plus life saving benefits. So it doesn't actually say the name, but I'm going to show the bottle. And if I can find 
the name, I'll pop it up on the screen. But what this essentially is, is Excedrin without caffeine or that drowsy ingredient. So it's just the base of Excedrin, which is aspirin and acetaminophen. Yeah. So if that works for you, but you don't want the caffeine or the drowsiness, this is an excellent option. I wish I would have known about it a long time ago, but it's there. So I think that covers everything. Let me take a drink break and we'll wrap this up. So I'm looking at my notes and I forgot something. Breathing techniques. This doesn't always work. Sometimes the pain is too real, you know, and this could be a little in the woo woo realm, but try to find a breathing practice. There are a lot of different techniques out there. I will tell you the one that I found that works for me and how kind of crazy my mind can be. It's, it's never ending. I can't just sit and be quiet and meditate. That's too difficult. <laughs> I learned this at a float spa. If you're interested, I would highly check out a float spa. It is a pod that you go into that has 10 inches of water and it has so much Epsom salt that you float without trying. They're really interesting. I know in the age of COVID, you know, however you feel, but they do instruct you to shower before and after. There's a shower in the room with the pod. A lot of these places will let you try it once for free. It can be kind of pricey, but I went once and it was kind of life-changing because the place that I went to gave this example of how to control your breathing and quiet the mind. And it's going to sound really simple, but it works, especially for someone who has trouble quieting my mind. And that is counting every breath until you are just no longer thinking about anything. Anytime a thought comes in and interrupts your counting, you start over. It's just kind of a mind-numbing way to relax. And I do that, and I also made a playlist. That day that I popped a picture up of where I was in immense pain, I made playlists that I was trying to quiet my mind with, and it's called Girl, You in Danger. So I will link that below if you are someone who is into that kind of more woo-woo stuff, who wants to get into a breathing practice, or who wants to meditate with music. I'll link it below. I like it. It has a lot of music from Chakra Healing. And I love that stuff. I know it's not for everyone. I tried to keep this as practical as possible. And again, I hope this was really helpful. If you're someone struggling with these things and you have tips outside of these, let me know down below. Let's share it. Let's be kind of a resource for people who are going through a hard time and show them how to kick chronic pain in the butt, you know? Also, if you have any other suggestions for beauty strategy, even ones that I might not personally go through, I love creating strategies around dealing with these types of things. So let me know down below or in the link for the video request submission. I hope you're having a great day. If you are struggling while you're watching this, again, you're not alone. Do not let the isolation take over your mind. Know that there is an end to the pain. There's ebbs and flows and recovery is not linear. You'll have great days, you'll have bad days, but as you continue to build your arsenal of some of these things, it's going to get easier. And also make sure you're finding the humor. That's my biggest tip actually, we'll end on that. Try as hard as you can to find the humor in some of these things, that is my number one coping mechanism. I know that I can be a little deadpan at times, but I literally make fun of everything, including myself and my situation and sometimes laughing is the best medicine. It is necessary medicine, and we have to keep positive even when everything feels not quite in that camp. So yeah, I hope you're doing great. I hope you're not in pain today, and I hope that I will see you in the next one, and until then, have a great loving day. Bye.